welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Simeon. Don't forget this show is sponsored by loserpool.com. Head over to their website for more information on how to play and how to sign up. I'm going to touch on two uh, topics on today's edition. Uh, the first being Lucas Torreira. Arsenal star Lucas Torreira has been strongly linked with a move back to Italy, which would see him reunited with former boss Marco Giampaolo at AC Milan. Despite suggestions Torreira had told the Arsenal hierarchy he was unhappy with life in London and desperately wanting a move back to Serie A, Football.London understand that this is not the case. Reports in Italy suggest that Milan will test Arsenal's resolve by offering to take the Uruguayan on loan for two years in a deal worth approximately £7 million, which would include a mandatory purchase clause for £35 million at the end of the term. It's no secret Milan have had issues regarding their adherence to the financial fair play rules and there are question marks over whether or not they would be able to raise the funds required to table a serious offer. Torreira has spoken of his struggles adapting to life in England. The language has been a major problem for the 23-year-old and he's expressed his concerns regarding his inability to communicate with his teammates and the disadvantages that come with that. Torreira's agent has spoken warmly regarding the prospect of Torreira being reunited with his former boss, but it seems those comments were solely out of respect for the coach who gave the player his chance to shine in one of Europe's strongest leagues. Whilst his adaptation to life in the Premier League has been a difficult one off the field, he certainly not displayed that whilst wearing the famous red and white of Arsenal. Torreira has been one of the Gunners' outstanding performers this season and is regarded by many as the club's most important signing for years. As it stands, Arsenal are extremely unlikely to entertain any offer from AC Milan's representatives, namely Ivan Gazidis, who of course left London for Northern Italy as recently as January of this year. Torreira, upon his arrival, signed a contract until 2023 and remains very much a part of the Gunners' long-term strategy. So as it stands, the reports that we're getting today suggest that Lucas Torreira has not told the club that he wants to leave. If that's the case, then you hold on to the player. There's no question about it. If the, the, the situation sorry, was slightly different and Torreira was you know, trying to engineer a move away, then I'd probably be saying something very different and I'd be saying if that's the case then you need to get the maximum that you can for him and move on but whilst Lucas Torreira is happy in London I'm happy to have him at Arsenal Football Club and I hope that the club hold on to him let me know what you guys think too in the comments uh, very contrasting reports to those that we heard yesterday um, and and like I said earlier on in this uh, this summer you know during the series that we're going to get this, aren't we? It's transfer silly season. We're going to hear one thing one day and something completely different the next. So it's important to take all these reports, all these stories with a pinch of salt. The second topic that I want to weigh in on today is regarding uh, the calls for Hector Bellerin to be named as the Arsenal captain. Hector Bellerin has earned plenty of admirers on the field um, and, you know, lots of credit for his exemplary behaviour off of it. But does that make him the standout candidate for the Arsenal captaincy? I wrote a piece for Vavil today, which is going to be published later on. Uh, well, it should be published by the time this video goes out. So I'm going to share it with you, um, you know, and I'm going to sort of touch on the points that I wrote in that piece as well. And uh, I want to see whether you guys agree or disagree. Now, when Unai Emery arrived at the Arsenal, of course, his appointment was greeted with great optimism. The hope was that Emery would turn around a team who had been really underachieving, bring in his own men, move on the dead wood and get the best out of the few players with the potential to develop. Now, one of those with undeniable potential is Hector Bellerin. The Spaniard arrived in London as a youth player, having previously played at Barcelona and established himself as the team's first choice right back. Bellerin initially showed great promise, but I think it's fair to say during the 17-18 season, we were beginning to see signs of stagnation. His explosive pace and valuable contribution to the team as an attacking force were a real asset, but at times his defending has left a lot to be desired for. One of Arsenal's biggest problems last season was the lack of width within the squad, and Emery's over-reliance on the fullbacks to provide that left us defensively exposed countless times. Now, whether you agree or disagree with Unai's approach, it's clear Hector Bellerin 
was accurately following his manager's instructions and his energetic performances on the right-hand side saw him register five assists in his 19 league appearances. And just when you thought we were starting to see the best of Bellerin, he ruptured the anterior cruciate ligament of his left knee and was ruled out for six to nine months. The Spaniard's injury was a huge blow to the squad and to Unai's plans for the remainder of the campaign, especially after having lost Rob Holding for the season around about a month prior. Hector was sorely missed. With Stefan Licksteiner unable to step in and perform to the level required, Emery turned to Ainsley Maitland-Niles, a young midfielder by trade who had filled in as a fullback under Wenger. Arsenal's defensive issues run far deeper than just the right-back position, but being without Bellerin certainly played its part. However, it's Bellerin's off-the-field influence that has led to many calling for him to be named as the club's new captain. His love for fashion and flamboyant style has been highlighted in the media, mocked even by football fans up and down the country, but his willingness to speak out regarding important issues such as mental health, climate change and racism is what we should be discussing. A footballer using his influence on social media to do good should be applauded. In a week where Manchester United star Jesse Lingard has been ridiculed for uploading inappropriate videos of his friends on holiday, Bellerin's conduct deserves even more credit. The way the 24-year-old carries himself is exemplary and I'm proud to say that he represents the Arsenal. So we've established Bellerin is a leader off the field, but has he got what it takes to wear the armband and lead this group to success on it? When you think of the great Arsenal captains, Tony Adams and Patrick Vieira instantly spring to mind. Two extremely tough characters, natural born leaders ready to do battle week in week out for the cause and no strangers to physical confrontation. But the reality is times have changed and often clubs captains are selected based on their public image and marketability. The tough tackling, seemingly angry and no nonsense captains of yesteryear are a dying breed. The role of club captain has slowly been devalued in recent years and Unai's decision to name five captains at the start of this season reinforces that point. In my view, there's no reason why Bellerin shouldn't be regarded as one of the team's leaders given he's been with the club since 2011, knows the culture inside out and has represented the club well off the field. But handing him the armband exclusively, in my view, would be premature. You get the feeling Bellerin's ceiling is higher than the level at which he's performed over the last couple of seasons. The priority for him and the club should be to carefully manage his recovery and return to fitness, and the added burden of the captaincy would only increase the pressure on the young man. Perhaps a future Arsenal captain, but during a time of great transition, experience and still are key. Therefore, I struggle personally to make Hector Bellerin the number one candidate. I'd love to know, though, what you guys think on that. Is Hector Bellerin ready to wear the Arsenal armband? If he's not, who else would you consider? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell icon too. That way you'll never miss an upload. If you're listening via our audio platforms, a big thank you to you guys too. And don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever it is you download the show from. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Chronicles AFC Daily. Until then, take care.